The following resource is presented by the Counseling and Conference Services of IOM America. Welcome to Identity Matters Podcast. Hi, my name is Steve Finney and I will be your speaker today. Every believer needs to understand who they are in Christ in our new series, Identity Theft. We'll do just that. Help each believer truly know who they are in Christ. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Part B of 141 of the Identity Matters series. The Millennial Generation. Now, from this point on, it's going to be it's going to feel like we entered into the twilight zone. Seriously, you're going to you're going to look at some of this stuff and go, "Really? Is that really true? Do they like really believe that?" I mean, you just, you just like kind of got to like shake your head a little bit and go, did I just read that? And that's how I was with this millennial Jesus thing. I'm like, really? <laughs> is there humans out there that really think Jesus is bisexual? Is it, is this real? Yeah, I'm afraid it is. You have to make your God like your own flesh or you won't feel comfortable with your own flesh. So Jesus has become a lot of things. So you have now entered the twilight zone and welcome to the world of emergent millennial Christianity. So who are these millennials? Well, some of you have heard them referred to as hipsters. If you take the word hipster and you hyphenate it, H-I-P hyphen, you'll actually get the, the uh, definition that is listed in the dictionary for hipster. Now, the Urban Dictionary has a very quick definition to give you about hipsters. They describe them. Vintage clothing, big glasses, tight jeans. You know, they, they kind of describe them to you. The Conservative Dictionary goes in a little bit deeper, and they basically say this is the grandchildren of the hippies. hip dash stirs. Stirring up the hippie movement again in a postmodern way. That's the hipsters. Relaxed. Your hair can go every which direction when you go to work and call it a hairstyle. You can have holes in your jeans and ripped shirt and, you know, go into, go to church like that. And the church has to accept you the way you are and call it a fashion. You can shave the sides of your head and make it preppy on top. It's a fashion. Whereas it used to be an act of war for a native to shave the side of their head and leave a chunk going down the middle. Now, Generation Y. Well, we can't call them Generation X. So I guess it's X, Y. I guess there's one more generation coming and that's the Z's. Right? And that might even line up with how much time we got left. So, you know, Alistair and Evan's kids are going to be Generation Z. And boy, are they going to be a truck wreck. Not necessarily your children. We're hoping your children support the traditional Christianity. Okay, and then the echo boomers. Well, there's baby boomers. Remember them? Several of us here in the room. An echo boomer is, they're the echo. 
of the baby boomers. And then the next generation. And then the boomerang. <laughs> the boomerang generation. I kind of like that. They come back around and hit you the side of the head. Well, Jesus said there shall come a day when your children will rise up and kill you. That's kind of what's happening out there. I think Generation Z will see more of that. And then, this is my all-time favorite. And then I went and looked it up. But the Peter Pan generation. I used to love Peter Pan, okay? It, I mean, just Captain Hook, some of those characters, you know, I brought into my Jack the Journey story. And, you know, while I went and looked it up, the Peter Pan generation is the gay community of millennial generation. Okay. They're not my favorites anymore. 602. 292-2982. Regardless what name is used to describe the millennials, the conservative branch of the church considers them to be the most difficult generation in human history to evangelize and or to lead them into a discipleship relationship. And as believers in Christ, we need to ask the question, why? Why is this generation so difficult to get them to stay committed to a discipler? I mean, if you offend them as a pastor and they're sitting in a pew, or if you offend them as a discipler, it's giving them an absolute, it leaves them feeling guilty. And so they're not used to that feeling anymore. And that's the way it was explained to me by this pastor, is they're not used to feeling guilty any, anymore. That's gone. They don't feel guilt because they've made everything that was wrong, they've made it right. So they don't feel guilt anymore. So a strong conservative teacher or disciple would come along saying, well, that's just sin. It's destructive. It's going to hurt you. It, you, know, you just speak the terms of the Word of God or quote verses at them. Watch out. Because you could be persecuted. Big problem. <coughs> now, the identity thief in the millennials has diced this up a little bit. Recently, I have been given the challenge by two ministries to develop a media campaign focusing on reaching the millennials without swapping things out. And that is a huge task. How do you speak into that generation without sounding too hip? Because anyone who's trying to sound like you don't, you, don't you usually know it? That they're trying to be like you. I'm kind of a biker guy, so if I'm around certain people and I try to talk that biker, you know right away that they're trying to fit in to be your friend or whatever the case may be. So that's what it is. We got to be careful not to do that, but still carry the gospel into their generation. We have to. Because Generation Z is going to be more than a train wreck. So we have to. Can't leave the gospel on Grandpa's doorstep. we got to bring it in. So after several years of probing this issue, I agree with the multitude of others and that the church has got a problem. And if you go online and do research, Pastor, you're going to find that very... Very few churches and ministries have found a solution. Two, we are losing our next generation. Since this generation claims that their key identity markers is to be your own person, 
The church's message of not I but Christ is not only difficult, but is outright impossible to impart without the power of the Holy Spirit. They're spending every penny they have and every voice expression and picket sign to say that they're individuals and they're not manipulated or controlled by any church, any government, any leader. They are their own God. That's our culture we're engaging. And the, the culture we're in smacks up against that and says, you are not your own God. That's satanic. That's what Satan believes. You'll go to hell with that. Well, that's, that's incredibly offensive. Hate crime. Let's take a look at a couple more before we quit. The Echo Boomers quickly pour their time, efforts, and funding into, new into the new millennial church, which is a feel-good, eye-centered, concert-seeking fellowship. What is a traditional Bible-founded church to do? Well, before we answer that question, we need to review the history that has led up to this monster-sized emergent millennial church. A friend of mine in Phoenix who attends one of these churches said to me, we were talking about funding and how important it is to take care of these big churches and how funding has become hiring a business financial pastor to have on the team to invest the donations that are coming in. And he said, and by the way, the new thing is doing tithe with the church's app. And they, they do, during the basket time going around, they still send the basket around, offering plate around, for those who are not into the new millennial way of donating. But he said the lion's share is a tap on their church's app, click donate, and then put their offering in, and it goes directly into the church's bank account from their phone. No stealing, no fraud. All it is is calculating the numbers at the end of the day. And the church is encouraging people to go that direction. Hmm. Well, there was one pastor I read this week online. He's actually a consultant. And I'm going to contact him personally. He says he will answer personally. And so I'm going to give it a try. Because he is he's not a pastor that I know of. But boy, does he know this group. And he's able to tell you the ramifications of online donations. He's able to give you the ramifications of the millennial generation not being able to have a relationship with each other. They'd prefer to text you two people down than to lean over and say, Good morning. I missed you this week. It's, Good morning. I missed you this week. Sam. If they actually looked at you after they got the text, you're kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what to do with it. It is a problem. Secondly, the term millennials originally described the grandchildren of the ever so popular hippie movement or hipsters. I was one of them. The early blooming millennial hipsters became the new Generation Y who wanted to bring back the overtly casual mystic or mystics of independent thinking, counterculture, progressive politics, and appreciation of dark art and ID rock, creativity, secondhand intelligence, Versus straight from the traditional old school Bible. A witty banter 
in the form of texting, face postings, and picture captures. So that what that means is that they're not quoting from the Bible. They're quoting, well, Rob Bell said that Generation Y is the most important generation yet because we're defining the real Jesus. What does that mean? Give me a Bible verse. Well, he said that it's not as important to be quoting men from the past than it is to quote men from the present. That's a quote. And see, logically from science, that makes perfect sense. Why would I quote from a man that was so removed from our present culture, Paul, why would I quote from that guy and I should rather quote from a guy that I really have some kind of relationship, at least through my Twitter account, who quotes something, I should be quoting him. How could, how could a mind be so detached from the Word of God? It's real simple, folks. When they, 10 years ago, when internationally they unplugged the, the Bible from being the authoritative Word of God, all hell broke loose. Everywhere. You say, I'm not affected by that. Really? I'll bet there's tons of you who are listening that read something out of the Bible and go, Really? Really? You see, doubt comes from Satan. And for him to put a doubt of you questioning authenticity, the voice of God, is easy. Because all Satan has to do is go, really? <laughs> you believe that? That's all that's happened in your head. And pretty soon you're going, oh, man, I need an upgrade to my translation. Anyone know about a gender-friendly, animal-friendly translation out there somewhere? A friend of mine, a theologian, we both have agreed in 2017, we're not going to pick on the transgender Bibles. We're not. What we're going to tell people, which is what I'm saying exactly right now, because there are so many translators working on new ones now, that the NIV thing will just be one on the list. We're telling people don't use a Bible that is after 1999. That's what we're saying. Was NIV before 1999? I'm afraid it was. Well, I could have a discussion with you about a handful of verses. But see, with this new one, it's everywhere. It's like stirring chocolate into milk. It's everywhere. So that's what we're telling people. When they say, well, what Bible do you recommend? Any of them before 1999. But I would prefer you to pick, and then you could tell them your favorites. Something happened in 1999. The plug was pulled from authenticity and absolute word of God. Ran a different generation, and these people are correct. Our last one is this. As with most anti-parent culture groups, because that's what they are, they're anti-parent. The millennials detach from their parents' traditions, religious beliefs, and political positioning and tend to cling to each other like ticks on a dog. One of the primary reasons this self-identified group roots itself in the hippie culture is that these subcultural types casually deal with life. Casually deal with life while maintaining a high degree of distinct fashion. Keep in mind that their goal is to go from being a subculture 
to be in a primary culture. In 1995, I could list out for you very clearly, and I doubt anyone in this room would disagree with me at all, I could list out for you the subcultures group, groups in the world, and you go, yeah, that's the truth. Those groups, if you want to know how lazy we have been in Christianity, true indweltism, get this. Those groups run this country. Those groups are the pastors of our churches. Those groups set up the businesses in our community. Those groups are the counselors that counsel our hurting people. And you say that we have not come a long way, baby? We have moved so quickly since 1995. If you stay with this series on millennials and the identity thief, your mind is going to be shaken from the foundation of its creation. I am going to show you by solid, sound research that these groups are no longer rumored groups to talk about. They are a full-on, collected, unified, merged culture. And once individual groups merge and they don't make a big deal about their religion, politics or traditions anymore and they merge all that together and you agree that you are one force oh I sure hope you listeners are awake because that cultural will kill you they'll burn your churches they will steal your children they will walk into a Bible study with an automatic weapon and literally hose down your Bible study. Did this not happen a few months ago? And as they said in the article that I read, even as he, after he was sentenced, he said he regrets nothing that he has done. Why did he associate, he was, had this thing about black people. Why did he associate a Christian traditional Bible study group of people who happened to be black? How did he make that association? Who does he really hate? Traditional Christianity? Yes, that is his original hatred. This thing is, is getting so far out of control that I'm afraid you as a listener are going to have to stick your head in the sand. You're going to have to start yawning and getting bored and sleep your way through this next phase we're going to go through, this great collide. Or it's going to make you more and more alert. It's your choice. You guys know what my views are of President Trump. I love this man. I have two friends that have got access to his life now. I'm expecting great things to happen, but I'm here to tell you I did not give him my vote. Because I could not vote for a man who makes a living off of prostitution. I can't. But I, he has my heart. He has my prayers. And I'm hoping to see great things. But this I do know, listener. God is going to use this man, saved or not. God is going to use this man to collide the two cultures. 
And if you could just keep it that simple over the next 10 years, oh, this is just the colliding of the two cultures. And that one statement, the person you're saying that to, probably they should, if they're not afraid of truth, should ask you, what two cultures? Oh, I know there's over 2,000 subcultures, but I'm speaking more of the culture of God of the universe and the culture of Satan, the God of deception. And if you lose him at that point, guess what? Yes? No, I'm millennial. I will not have that discussion with you. Do you hear me? Leave me alone. No, I will not open the door. What? I told you, leave me alone. You're just being kind. Traditional Christianity. Well, um, I, I love you. I just want to, I just want to share God's love with you. Hello! Get off my porch! Do you want to live to see your next hamburger? And we think, oh, that's never going to happen in America. <laughs> Look down your street because it's already happening. So this, this problem that we have is in front of us. So our identity matters statement for today is, Millennials tend to reject culturally ignorant attitudes. And a lot of our listeners, I'm afraid, are ignorant. Those who don't change with the times. And to you, I say, congratulations. If you need to dye your hair, you know, to look funky, and I believe it's okay to dye your hair. But I'm talking about the kind of stuff you would do to fit in to the culture so they don't, can't tell the difference. Be ye separate, O oh my people. Well, he didn't mean that with my hair, or my clothing, or my shoes, or my earrings, or my necklaces, or my tattoos. Wait till next week's message on tattoos and jewelry. Pure science, pure research, and how well it works. What you wear is a confession of what your idol wears. And we have to talk about that. So millennials do tend to reject culturally ignorant attitudes of mainstream society by pretending to be on the cutting edge of the intellectual community. They can't appropriate truth. It takes the Holy Spirit in me to appropriate truth. How many agree with that? Yeah. I have the mind of Christ. So do you. But you see, people are afraid to take on smart people because you're going to feel dumb when the conversation's over. If you feel dumb, then you're not presenting the mind of Christ appropriately. That is, if you believe you have him inside you. You can never lose an argument if you let Jesus do the talking. Because there are certain things that the enemy baits you with in intellect. Don't bite them. It's a waste of time. I always try to go three steps ahead of what someone says to me and say, have you considered da-da-da-da-da-da-da? You have thrown them off so much because you're into something that has nothing to do with the science of what they are proven or whatever you were into life. And this is the kind of training stuff and ideas that I'm going to be throwing out to you in our series practical things we need to do. They make statements of not forgetting the past while making it clear that they will forget the conservative religious and political values of their past. Or should I say their parents' past. They are quick to 
reinvent old styles with postmodern flair. And see, that's always been a, a fascinating to me. When I see you, the first thing that I do is I, I evaluate what you're wearing, not judge it. Most people just wear whatever is comfortable and, you know, they may line up a few colors and no big deal, okay? But if someone shows up at your front door and they are just hipped out, okay? Hair, jewelry, clothes, boots, you know, tattoos, they're just hipped out. You see, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to, secondly, I'm going to do what they spent money on for me to do. To evaluate them according to their clothing and their hair and their jewelry and their tattoos. Why else would they spend all that money and time to look like that? They want you to evaluate their confession. Because something in them won't let them confess it with their mouth to you. So they do it with clothing. They do it with culture. So here is the funny thing to me. You look at that generation, the millennial generation. They're wearing grandpa's hat. Sometimes grandpa's shirt. Grandma's dress. Or something from that generation that skips over their parents. Anti-parent culture. Okay, you with me? So they are erasing the parental out and grabbing the grandparent generation. Because they're not here to defend themselves. And they're bringing their, those fashions in, the hats and the glasses, the thick army glasses. You know the look. And they're wearing that. And it's a confession from that person of sin. You know, I have erased you from my life. But I'm keeping my grandfather and grandmother alive. So they'll wear it, but they want to be detached from the traditional Christianity attached to that generation. You want to know how far we've come, baby? Your grandparents were a part of a traditional Christianity, which I could spend an hour dicing up what happened during that generation, but that's another preach. But they were a part of a Christianity without even having to accept Jesus. They were just traditional Christians because the community was. Their church was. Their family was. So God's actually using this millennial generation and this colliding of the cultures to separate the goats from the sheep is what I believe. Prophetically, the bottom line after everything I'm going to cover in 2017 is God will by January 1, 2018, we'll have the goats and the sheep completely separated. And you know what comes after that? It's time to bundle up and, and light a fire and burn away that which is not good. Oh no, we've got a lot of years left. We'll see. I'm not into predicting the end times. I've been around too many that tried it, end up looking like fools. But what I am into is we better be ready for whenever it happens. Better have oil in our lamp, be awake. There's a painting in there with three lovely daughters. One's asleep. The other one looks like she's almost asleep. And one is very alert. 
That's very appropriate because those are the three categories I see believers. Well, let someone else worry about it. And then the middle one's kind of like, well, I don't know about that. You better wake, wake up. And then the other one's like, no, someone's got to do this. So I want our listeners, I want our, our fellowship to be that third category of, I'm alert, I'm awake. And I can't expect every indwelt believer to be alert and awake because a lot of them are just uninformed. So we're closing with this. They are quick to reinvent these old styles but stay separate at the same time from these culturally sheltered mainstream thinkers. Here lies the problem. Surveys prove that millennials have become the mainstream thinkers and have no clue regarding the indwelling life of Jesus and possessing personal identity in Christ. Yet, they all think they're Christians. We live in a Christian nation. I have never come across a verse yet in any translation that says a nation can ask Jesus Christ to come into its life. Have you? You see that twist? In the news, you'll read about and the Christian nation of, you know, and then they'll say it, and you're like, really? When did they ask Jesus into their life? Which plant is he living in? Is it the top layer of the dirt? The deeper? Where is he living? But it is a total natural neutral term that the millennials are saying, yes, that's right, we were once a Christian nation. Not anymore, thankfully. Got that God off of all of our dollar bills. That's happening this year. And we got all the God off of some of the buildings there in our capital. Won't let people put crosses in their yards anymore. Or hold uh, Bible studies in their homes. We've done well, people. This is no longer a Christian nation. We never were. That's our grandparents. So how many of our grandparents are inhaling the smoke of the pit of hell today? More than we want to realize. And I'll bet you a dime to a dollar that that saddened the heart of our Father. He had to shake things up. So I get it. And I hope you do as well. Give us a call at 602-292-2982. I prefer you to text. I can answer a lot faster. I have a whole texting system on my computer that texts come in from all over the world and it pops up on a little window and I can keep conversations going, multiple conversations going, versus a call obviously it takes poignant time to deal with each one of those. So give me a text if you can, or you can go to our website at www.iomamerica.org. Drop me an email, that's kind of fun, easy way to get a conversation go at drfinney at iomamerica.org. That's D R. P-H-I-N-N-E-Y at I-O-M America dot org Very soon we'll be releasing our research website. You can have all kinds of fun stuff. We're moving stuff over there uh, daily and uh, we were able to obtain the website of uh, the uh, domain address I-F-E-L dot life that's International Fellowship of Exchange Life. So uh, be praying about that. And uh, sooner or later you'll be able to go there and have all kinds of resources to download. You've been listening to Identity Matters Podcast. We appreciate having you join us today. 
Feel free to log on to our website at www.iomamerica.org. We have lots of resources available for you on the believer's identity in Christ. Again, thank you for joining us.